I'm Patricia. I worked in the oil and gas industry for quite some time. Uh, I did lots of different roles there from process development and also project engineering. Uh, my name's Stanley. I am a ornithologist, if you know what that means. I used to do research and manage a lot of conservation projects about birds in Australia and overseas. So yeah, um, today we're going to talk about what sort of uh, what kind of factors have made us to stand here side by side and chose to become maths and science teacher? And here are some pictures, and they all have something really good in common. They do. And you guys can guess what's in common about all these pictures. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, who are we going to talk about how we actually connect all these things together? Oops. Oops. And I really believe that um, it allows us, maths allows us, or allows the industry to live in harmony with nature. We can have both. Absolutely. Okay, so. Start All right, so I'll start off with, um, there's so many examples to pick from, and I can only really scratch the surface. But I'm gonna go through three particular ones. Functions, I'm gonna go through probability, and I'm gonna go through networks as well. Now for functions, now this is the core of the work that I was doing, functions are everywhere. And there are so many complicated functions where a lot of modelling is required in algebra. But what I'm going to go through today is something really simple, the control valve. And I've put in things here, images, when things go wrong, it usually gets students' attention. These things are huge. You know, some of these industrial valves can be the size of this room. I've walked through some of those, literally, you know, and I know I'm not that tall, but you know, <laughs> other people have walked through them. Anyway, what I wanted to um, highlight about control valves, because it's something really easy, for students to understand functions, that for every input in the domain there's a relationship and gives you a single output. And in the valve is really nice because, although it's a particular and a simple type of function, for a particular input you can only get one output. You can't tell the valve to open and close at the same time, right? And so that's a concept for kids to understand. Another one is that relationship, yeah? Valves are actually designed using these curves, and a lot of these curves are very familiar to students already. And I'll keep on going. I wanted to talk to you about all the different types of curves, but move on. Oh, yes. by the way, so this is the whole oil industry that she's working. <laughs> Thank you, Stanley. Yes, well, this we do not want to happen. I mean, something like this, you're looking at about people working in those offshore platforms. You're looking at about hundreds of people working there. And safety is paramount, right? Um, not to mention the impact on the environment. And there are a few things that we can do to prevent that. But at the heart of it is probability. And there are some jobs within, the, within that particular industry that work really hard in all faces, from the design, when you construct the stuff, and when you operate it. And that's a safety engineer. And at the core of the work they do is those tree diagrams we've been looking at. Networks. One of my first roles when I was working in Scotland was to be the focal point for the gas network in the North Sea. And if you can just visualise this, this is huge. You're looking at about 100 users, people going into that platform, and some of these platforms have got 20 to 50 wells, and even those are connected to other subsea tides. You've got many companies, even companies from Norway were tapping into the pipeline. In terms of users, that gas supplied gas to all of the UK. And you had to take into account variables like the supply of gas. In winter, people use more gas than they do in summer for heating. And not only that, the liquids or the heavy ends ended up going to be offloaded as NGLs. So the system is really complicated. It changes from day to day and only through networks and understanding of that can you actually operate something this complex. Cool. So, actually network occurs in natural world as well. In fact, we've got a lot more networks in the natural world than in the real <laughs> human world. So here's one. The tree of life. So if we're trying to work out how different species are uh, related to each other, we're using networks trying to build that connectivity between different species based on their genetic uh, similarities. And also statistics. I know in the new syllabus we talk a lot about networks and statistics. So I spent about five years working with this critically endangered black-throated finch in North Queensland and also fighting against mining industry, particularly <laughs> the 
Adani in central Queensland. I discovered the largest remaining population of this species right in the centre of Adani. And I almost got threatened to go to court by Adani because of that. Anyway, so, uh, so what my research uh, demonstrated in the end was I used a lot of st statistical analysis of the DNA sequence to prove that that particular population I discovered in central Queensland was a, was a very unique population that really deserves a lot uh, of the conservation attentions rather than just like what Clive Palmer has said, all oh, finches can fly, they can just simply fly to another land and find another habitat, which is obviously mathematically and biologically illiterate. illiterate. Anyway, modeling, sorry. Um, this is another, that's also a very important mathematical um, concept that we use in a lot of the scientific research, like the climate change prediction, and also more closely we can model uh, the habitat suitability, cool. habitat su suitability to determine where the species can uh, live in the near future when the environment has changed. So, to end our talk, we wanted to basically say uh, the key information is that maths is actually in everyday life. It's not something abstract and the kids are like, oh my god, my math, I don't want to do it anymore, it's so boring, it's so abstract. It is actually in everything we do. So we really need to make that connection, both as, you know, previous, uh, we had our careers before and also, you know, as a pre-service teacher, I'm pretty sure a lot of the math teachers here already understand the point of the importance of connecting maths and the real life experiences that we have. And just one more point, there's a lot of these examples, the maths that you use is maths from high school, it doesn't have to be university level, it's at high school level, even maths you'd be using in year eight, you could actually use to you know, size a control valve. So. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much.